Record. Welcome to our exclusive VIP team call. I know this is completely out of the norm for us, Diesel Core. We usually don't do lunchtime calls, but I told you, I messaged you all. It's been blown up in the team page. Like this is the call you wanna be on live if you can. And of course we will always hit the record button uh, for playback, but this is going to be a call that I know is gonna impact not just your business, but your life and your mindset and the way that we're operating in such a big way. And how do I know this? Well, you guys have heard me brag about her, talk about her, cry over her. I'm gonna introduce you today to my mentor and coach, Rachel Bodie. And before I introduce you guys to her and tell you, and she'll tell you a little bit more about her and what today's call is gonna be all about, I kinda of wanna give you some behind the scenes of my business when it comes to my personal development, to my growth in, in not just the business, but in leadership, in personal growth and all of that. Over the 11 years that I've been a coach, right? And we know that personal development is one of our vital behaviors. Over the course of 11 years, I've invested in my business, you guys as my team, and in myself and my family through personal development in many ways. It's been buying books, right? Listening to podcasts, you know, purchasing maybe an online conference, attending live conferences. I've always put myself and I've always made at least once a year a pretty significant investment into myself, right? And it looked many different ways. But then COVID happened, right? And those two years were pretty funky. Um, for any of you guys that have been around our team in that time, actually for our team, 2020 was explosive. It's when we hit the top possible rank in the business possible, which is Superstar Diamond. So we were kind of on the up and up, but you know what did take a back seat was my personal growth. I had not made any true investment in it because we were just like in the thick of it all and, and working through um, a unprecedented time that, that we were able to serve a lot of people. But then there came like this kind of like halt crashing moment where I realized, oh gosh, right? The law delay, we talk about it all the time. The law delay can work for us or against us, right? Sometimes it works against us because you don't realize the delay of not doing something. And I'll tell you that it was the, around the end of 2021. Well, I would say about midpoint. Actually, I can pinpoint it, Rachel. You and I know we, when we can pinpoint it. It was right before I left on the Superstar Diamond trip that, that um, I attended in California. And I was just at this point where I knew I needed to make an investment. And I had heard about Rachel through a couple of leaders. Uh, Nicole Dobransky, by the way, guys, here's like a little quick plug. Nicole Dobransky and I are tonight, Diesel Nation's call on Four Week Go Protocol. Make sure you're there. Uh, but Nicole was actually, funny enough, the one that first mentioned Rachel to me, right? And we know that Nicole's had an, an amazing year in her business, but I also saw just a couple of, of traits that Nicole had that I admired, I wanted, or I saw that I, I wanted to learn more about. And then when I went on the Superstar Diamond, I took my first call with Rachel, and then when I went on the Superstar Diamond trip, um, funny enough, I would say about maybe, what was it, Rachel, like four or five different girls on that trip, when I mentioned Rachel, they're like, yes, I've worked with her. Yes, I work with her. Like, and, and all the things that they were telling me, and I was asking all these questions, and I realized like Rachel is exactly what I needed because she's helped me in all the time we spent together working on my mindset, right? And I think that you guys know me, You've been working with me as your as your upline leader for many years now. I'm looking at some of my veterans here, and you know that I can be that bull in a china shop, right? Like, like check all the boxes, let's do all the things, let's get all the work done. But if we're not taking care of this right here, then that's where burnout could happen. That's where you could get lost in what what the heck am I doing this for in the first place, right? You can get lost in what your value is, what your purpose is, what your mission is. And Rachel has helped me get in tune with that again. And I know, because I'm looking at a lot of your faces because you've private messaged me or we've hopped in a call or you've sent me one of those amazing text messages and I always forward them to Rachel, by the way. Okay, I need you to know that. You've come, reached out and said like, I feel the shift or oh my gosh, this is like exact, what, whatever it is that we're working on is exactly what we needed. It's derived from her and it's derived from the work that we are doing together that is then translating to all of you guys and what we're doing as a team. And here we are again, and I talk to Rachel about it all the time. I What I feel inside brewing is like 2020 vibes when our team was on the verge of going next level for not just my business, but your business, for us collectively as a team. And we're there again. I feel it brewing again, and I know we're going in the right direction. 
So with that being said, for the very first time, I wanted to bring Rachel on, right? And I told you guys this would be a VIP exclusive call because you're talking to a woman who spent years, years, and you guys know, where's Amy Albarello? You guys know my obsession with John Maxwell, how I, I, he doesn't know he has another grandchild out there, but I consider him like my grandpa. And when reading his book, The Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, years ago, it's, it's one of the only books I finished cover to cover taught me so much that since then it was the very first summit also that John Maxwell was the keynote speaker and it made Johan realize what this like it first of all brought him to tears and second made him realize what kind of business I you know I was in and what I was doing here and and then all the teachings that I've ever done with John Maxwell is just like impacted my life in such a big way and to know that Rachel's worked with John Maxwell years upon years she was a coach and she worked right you authored co-authored books with him didn't you rachel like well, some training content not his actual like hard couple books but. but that's incredible so she now and you can tell them more about who else you work with she worked with chick-fil-a corporate with chick-fil-a like so many things her and she also has experience in coaching by the way guys so you could hear about that from her as well but all this to say is that so many things connected and i took I took the leap with Rachel and I haven't regretted one moment. So it is my absolute honor and privilege to introduce you guys to her. Rachel, this is my amazing team. There's so many missing faces, but I know a lot of them are working right now. I'm going to catch the replay, but you know all about them. So Rachel, welcome to Team Diesel Core. Thank you, man. What an intro. Man, I wasn't prepared for the music and the intro. Well, thanks for that, Monica. The feeling's mutual and incredible leader that you are. And you know, one of the things actually I teach in my mastermind is this concept of deciding that you're going to get what you came for. And one of the reasons why Monica has had so much success is because she's just decided. And that's actually one of the things I'm going to talk about. You didn't even know that. So it's like such a perfect setup. We're on the same wavelength here. So as I, as she was introing, I was looking at all of you and just seeing you guys in different places. Some of you driving, some of you in an office, some of you with kiddos. And I was just thinking about you and praying that something today meets you where you're at. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know a lot of us are busy working mamas, busy working women with big goals and dreams. And so that's my prayer today. And I know that God always shows up where he needs to show up. So let's, let's do this. You guys ready? All right. So I want to share just a quick touch about me. <clears throat> Monica gave a little bit of an intro. So I am now a business coach for social sellers, and I work with a lot of six and seven figure earners, not just in Beachbody, but across lots of different network marketing companies. Um, I got my undergrad from University of Georgia. I went to business school. I thought I was going to be like in corporate America and be a corporate climber, which I was. I got hired by John Maxwell, and that was such an awesome experience, you guys. I got to, he's like, he is like my grandfather, by the way. <laughs> so I look at him that way. He's really, um, has been just transformational in my life. He's someone who's really poured a lot into me and helped shape who I am as a leader. He hired me on. Um, I came in doing licensing, and then I eventually got promoted to leader global consulting division. So what that means is I got to do some really cool stuff. I got to travel places internationally, London, all kinds of, all over the place. Got to work with Coca-Cola and Gap and Microsoft and Chick-fil-A, awesome company here in Atlanta. But here's what happened. So that was also beautiful from the outside, right? And then I had two babies back to back. My first one planned, second one was like, oh, okay. I was seven months old and I got pregnant again. I remember being in the bathroom crying hysterically and my husband was like, it's going to be okay. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're doing this again. I, I was uh, with my first, I had postpartum depression, trying to navigate being a new mom, traveling all over the world. My husband was also traveling internationally. So it was like the perfect recipe for me to want to do something different. But I'm like, what am I going to go do where I'm making, I was making many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I saw, found this woman on Instagram. I started cyber stalking her, never commenting on anything she shared because I was like, I'm afraid if I do, she'll reach out to me. By the way, John used to go to all these events for network marketing companies, right? And sometimes I go with him and those people would try to recruit me, you guys, aggressively. <laughs> 
So I was like, Greg, get away from me. You, you're like a cult or a pyramid scheme. I don't even know what all that is. Seriously, this is exactly what I thought. Anyway, lo and behold, reach out to this gal. She's like, I'm a beach body coach. I'm like, no way. That's gross. Would never do that in a million years until I did. Two weeks later, <laughs> after two more Sunday night meltdowns, I'm like, I'm going to just give this thing a try. I think I could do this. Janelle Summers, I asked her, Janelle, what do I need to do to build a six-figure business? Just tell me what to do. And so I did. I built my six-figure business in, in 20 months, actually, and was able to retire from my job at John Maxwell. I went five-star elite my first year. Um, I still have a I have a six figure business, um, but the majority of my time, yes, Veronica and I went elite the same year. Right. So crazy. I actually remember standing in line with her and I was, I'm, I'm the one who everyone is calm and cool. And I'm the one who's like crying. I'm like, why is nobody else emotional? I mean, you guys, I'm like, what is happening here? Uh, anyway, so that's what happened. It really, uh, last year during COVID, I just really was called and missed coaching high performers. I started coaching some ladies in different organizations. It snowballed. And now this is where I spend the majority of my time coaching leaders and across social selling. It's really where I feel like God is able to use me um, in a way to impact the most leaders who are able to impact the most leaders. So that's my story. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Emerald to five star in 10 months. Dang girl. That is incredible. So I love this business model. I'm passionate about this business model. I get kind of fired up when I see people like hate, hating on ML, MLMs in our industry because there's no other industry in the world that offers this opportunity as women to be able to scale these incredible businesses while being in, in amazing mamas and be able to do both. And just so y'all know, this is a little stat to kind of put in your back pocket. The social selling market share last year so it, it continues to rise. Last year was $185 billion, B with a B. So that's a pretty, when people say it's not a real business, I'm like, well, I don't know, almost $200 billion begs to differ and it only continues to grow. So you're a part of an incredible industry. There's incredible opportunity and, not, and within Beachbody, there's so much that's happening with the gut protocol. I mean, you guys know. So what I wanna talk about today, I wanna start by talking a little bit about what Monica, what I said about Monica, about getting what you come for. And then I'm going to teach you a concept that is like the number one concept that is that people say is game changer in the mastermind. So I don't ever share this outside the mastermind. You guys are getting like exclusive content here. It's going to be so good. I can't wait. So let me start by talking about <clears throat> this concept I call a hundred percent commitment. Okay. Because it really is one of the keys to success in your business. And the thing I love about it is it's 100% in your control. Does anybody else like to be in control? <laughs> All the control freaks, raise your hand, yes. We love it, right? We wanna feel like success and our results are in our control. And so let me explain what this is and what differentiates it. So a lot of times we think, or, or our challengers or coaches think they're committed when really they just want something. And those are two very different things. I mean, most of you want to build a successful business. You want to be able to have money freedom and time freedom. But wanting something is just a desire. It's just something that you wish for. Wanting something is passive. It doesn't require any action. It's easy. It's comfortable. And there's no change in results. And this can be very sneaky because you can feel really good wanting to lose 20 pounds or have a six figure business and not actually do anything to move towards it. And I see this happen a lot. Let's kind of conversely look at what commitment looks like. Commitment is a promise to do something. Action is required. You're gonna know you're committed because it's gonna feel pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not easy. But here's the cool thing, you will see a change in your results. You will see progress. And by the way, y'all, I know everyone on here knows this, but progress is not linear. You know what that means? Like we think, oh, from here to here. You ever see that graphic where it's like, from here to here is like the scribbles, like, <laughs> it's like circles. Yeah, sometimes it feels like two steps forward, three back, but progress is progress. 
It really is. And that's normal part of the journey. Let me just say this quick side note. If you're feeling doubt, if you're feeling discomfort, if you're feeling um, uncertainty about your business, you're doing it right. I feel that way sometimes. Monica feels that way. I have mil I coach several million dollar earners, seven figure earners. They feel that way. It's just a normal human emotion. When I feel that, I, I remind myself, this is what it feels like to build a million dollar business. Nothing's gone wrong. This is what it feels like to build to five star. This is what it feels like. Just remind yourself, normalize the doubt for yourself and for your people. That was a little sidestep there. Okay, back to 100% commitment. So my definition of 100% commitment is exactly what I just shared that Monica is doing. It's a decision that you're going to keep taking action no matter what until you reach your goal. When I started my Beachbody business six and a half years ago, my goal was to create a seven-figure business. And that hasn't changed. And I have created seven figures in my business. Just not in one year yet. We're tracking to do that next year. My goal was to do it in three years. She's actually looking back, that makes me laugh. I'm like, oh, we underestimate the amount of work it takes to do things, you guys, right? <clears throat> it's gonna take me probably seven years. Do you think I'm upset about that? I'm not upset about it. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it, I'm pretty proud. But this is what it means to be 100% committed and that's available to every one of you on the line. But here's the thing, and this is gonna require you to do a gut check and really be onto yourself. Cause we can be really good at like rationalizing things with ourselves, right? Like rationalizing why we do or don't think, don't do things. And specifically, you're gonna have to be onto yourself about how you quit. And I don't mean big quits. I don't mean like quitting the business and that's what I'm done. I mean little quits. Cause those little quits, you guys, those add up. And what, what I mean by a little quit is when you say that you're going to do something and you promise that to yourself and then you don't show up. You said you were going to do that call to action post, you don't. You said you were going to show up and do, do that action hour, you sleep in instead. And not because you're tired, but because you just don't feel like it. Because I, I also don't recommend hustling and killing yourself to try and create a result. But hustle comes from scarcity. You can work really hard and then rest really hard too. Another example would be saying you were going to invite that person that you're so afraid to invite them and you just don't. These are all little quits. So pretty much the thing that feels really uncomfortable that you said you were going to do and then you don't do the thing, that's a little quit. And the reason this is important is it's no big deal one time, one thing, right? But those things add up. So we don't really use, I don't know, do you guys use cash? Do a lot of you use cash anymore? Or do most of you use cards? But a lot of people use like credit cards now, right? You use like, we don't carry like a lot of change or anything, but my kids still do because we do like a system with my kids, give, save, spend, you know, so they, they still have cash and they have change that they get when they spend their money. <clears throat> my girls are nine and 11. My oldest just turned 11. Oh, I can't believe it. Anyway, when they spend money, they have, I have a change drawer here in my office. I don't know why it's in here, but they just throw their money in here. Got to a point where there was a lot of change in the drawer. $130 worth because we took it to one of those machines and we put all the change in there. We're like, and I'm like, that's mommy's money now. No, I, I let them spend the money. But here's what I want you to know. That change adds up. Those little pieces add up just like the change drawer. So what is your version of $130? Is that five-star lead? What is that for you? Is it earning 50,000? Is it earning 100,000 or more? Those little decisions add up. This is really just important to notice. And by the way, I, I noticed this um, mindset, not just with all people, even a lot of the top earners that I coach. Sometimes there's an expectation that we deserve 100% results <clears throat> without being 100% committed. And I do it sometimes too. You have whatever you want result you want to create. I want you to think about doubling the value that you need to put out there in order to create the result. It doesn't always mean you have to work yourself harder, but it means getting more uncomfortable. It's just not something we're accustomed to. So for those that know me, some of you do, you may think this is funny and it is. My first job 
in upstate New York, where I was born. I was 15 and I got a job working the drive through at McDonald's. Yes. I mean, it's just crazy to, to think about that. And I think I made like five, 15 an hour, something insane back then, minimum wage. Can you imagine if I went to my boss and I demanded a 40 hour paycheck having worked six hours? My boss would probably be like, you lost your mind, right? If you want 40 hours for a paycheck, you've got to work 40 hours, 100% results for 100% commitment. And again, this is that willingness to get uncomfortable. And you need to know, this is not hustling yourself into the ground, but it's doing those things each day, getting a little bit uncomfortable every single day. And knowing that the discomfort is the way, one of my mentors, Brooke Castillo, she's one of my coaches actually, incredible podcast, you guys, if you are into podcasts, it's called the Life Coach School Podcast. It's a weird name for a podcast, but the content is just, is brilliant. It's about business and growth and all the things that help us scale. And she just talks about knowing there's always going to be discomfort and that discomfort is the currency of your dreams. I remember um, my husband and I've been married 13 years. And we got married here in Atlanta at this beautiful restaurant called Canoe. And then he planned the honeymoon. We went to Bora Bora and Tahiti. I think that's where, actually, that's where the top 10 trip was. So we stayed at the St. Regis. Um, so we flew from Atlanta to LA, almost missed our flight. Back then, we, we um, traveled in coach. It's not comfortable. It's like, we're like little sardines. Then from LAX all the way down to Tahiti, which is another long flight also not comfortable, then a boat, then another boat, and then finally we're there, right? Okay, so you're like, where are you going with us? It was not comfortable. It wasn't comfortable, but I knew we were headed to paradise. And I'm like, you know what? It's worth it. Now we get to fly first class. It's a little bit different. And that's because of that back then, knowing that the discomfort is worth, is worth it. So you have to decide right now, what do you want more? Do you want comfort or do you want transformation? You really get to choose, right? And what's required to create transformation is to show up right now, today, as if that result is guaranteed. To invite like it's guaranteed, to invest in yourself like it's guaranteed, to market like it's guaranteed, to rest, like it's here, all of it. That's what's required. So the next time you want to skip inviting to the business or bold content or whatever it is that you said you're going to do, I want you to tell yourself, this is at the expense of my dream. Because that's really what it's about. And I know it's uncomfortable. I've been there, you guys. I've so been there. I've been in the fetal position in the corner of this office, like crying. It's hard sometimes, right? We doubt ourselves sometimes, but it's part of the process. Discomfort is part of the process. So one of the key ingredients as you are 100% committed is patience. I'm actually reading or listening to a book right now, Atomic Habits. I like, I'm way behind the curve on this one, you guys, I know. Incredible. It's very similar to the slight edge, the compound effect, but it really is all about those tiny habits. and practicing delayed gratification because that's what this is about right it's like doing the work and with full belief that you are going to create that result and I want to just invite you to think about it like a process it's a transformation process I tell my masterminders it's at least a three-year process and really it's for life so you've got to like love the process and keep showing up and give yourself time knowing that, you know what? Some days I'm going to feel like I'm on top of the world and other days it may feel slower, but you've got to be aware of your expectations that it should be going faster. Man, you guys, let me just be really honest. So my first two years of the business, even though I had that great success, you know what I would tell myself? This is crazy. I should be further along. I would tell myself that all the time and it created so much pressure and it created so much comparison 
and judgment and beating myself up. And even though I was creating those results, it was not fun. <laughs> there was not, there was, the joy wasn't there. I have been there. And you know what, you know what creates all that drama and all that negativity? Your brain. <laughs> and this is why I talk about mindset. Cause I know some of you are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I feel you. Cause I'm all about the results, ladies, all about it. Number one business strategist for John Maxwell. I brought in the year I left almost half of the company revenue myself personally, but that those thoughts, I should be further along. It's not working. I'm failing. She's going faster than me. People don't like MLMs. I don't, I don't want to be salesy. All those thoughts that seem so harmless create a lot of negative emotion and then cause us to show up in our business in a way that is not going to create the result that we want. So you have got to pay attention to what your mind is telling you, those little thoughts that seem so harmless because they're going to impact your result. That's why mindset is so important. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, but I want you to just have a quick meeting with yourself here and ask yourself really and truly, if it was 100% guaranteed, 100% guaranteed that you would hit whatever that goal is for you. Let's just say for a lot of women I coach, it's either 100K or like one of the big benchmarks, 250K, a half a million or a million. Pick whichever one you like, or if you want to pick a rank goal. If it were 100% guaranteed for you to hit that goal, how long would you be willing to be dedicated and committed to this? Would it be, I hope it'd be at least three years. Cause if not, your expectations are a little out of line. <laughs> I thought I was going to make a million dollars in three years. So my expectations were out of line too, right? But I just want to invite you to think about, imagine creating a six figure business in three years. It's incredible, right? But what happens is we look at other people and then we start to think it's not working. I'm behind. I should be where Monica is, even though she's been doing this 11 years. Oh, I did that too. I compared myself to like, Melanie, Metro, but you know, back in the day and what else? People who've been doing a lot longer than me, basically. So it's not even apples to apples, but our, your race, your pace, you got to put those blinders on. So notice, by the way, oh, I'm getting hot. That's why I know I'm onto something good when I start getting hot. I'm going to take up. Today is my CEO day. So I wear, I know I'm a beach body coach is I can wear my workout gear to this call. Um, I want it, I want you to notice if you're in a hurry to get to that goal. Why? Why are you in a hurry? Ask yourself that, write, write it down. Why am I in a hurry? And answer it later. I really want you to answer it. Here's why you are, ready? I want you to go back and answer, but I'm gonna tell you what I think. Because you think when you get there, you're gonna feel different. You think when you get there, then you're gonna feel enough. You're gonna feel like you, you did it. You're gonna feel successful. But what I wanna tell you is, what you do does not create how you feel. I know we think it does, but it doesn't. What creates how you feel is your thoughts. So you literally can create all of that emotion right now. And when you create that emotion right now, guess what happens? You create the goal more quickly. If you don't do that work, when you get there, you're going to feel exactly the same because wherever you go, there you are. You'll feel good in the moment. And listen, any of you who've hit a goal, whoever has hit a goal, diamond, five-star, had a baby, got married, six figures, superstar, you hit the goal and you feel good. And then what? You still have all the same thoughts. And then it's like on to the next thing. It's a moving target. So you've got to manage your mind right now and build the thoughts and beliefs right now that make you feel confident and sufficient and empowered and certain and safe, all of those things. Because it's everything. And I want that for all of you. I don't want you to get there like I did and be like, what the heck? This feels like just like it did before. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome, of course. And money does create options. And I'm definitely like, I love making lots of money. I love helping a lot of women but it really does start with your mindset first. And we have taught, yes, the thought downloads and Monica and I have talked a ton about this. So I do wanna to touch on this. I wanna teach you guys something really quick. There's like a million things I wanna teach you, 
but I'm trying to distill it down. So one of the things I want to show you to prove and to really hopefully sell you on this idea of managing your mind, because this is what's going to help you create whatever result it is that you want in your business. So I want to show you how your brain works and how you actually create results. Uh, it's not just what you do. It's the why behind what you do. It's what's driving what you're doing. Okay. There's something called the think, feel, act cycle. Let's hold that over that way. Whoop. My light almost went. Think, feel, and then act. It goes kind of like this. And this is the foundation of cognitive behavioral psychology. When I was going to John, when I got hired at John Maxwell, I was going to school to get my doctorate in psychology. So, so I've always been really fascinated with psychology. This is the foundation basically of therapy. And for anyone who's a Christ follower on the line, this is also biblical. In Romans 12, 12, it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you renew your mind and your mind then creates different emotion. Then you show up in the world differently, which is what we're going to talk about here in a second called top leader energy. So let me kind of share how this works. I just lost my place. Ah, there it is. I got some notes over here to make sure I stay on track because I could just talk all day about all these things. So I just want to give you an example of, of how this may work in your life. Okay. So one of the, one of the thoughts, I hear lots of thoughts from a lot of women that are all very similar, but one of the top ones I hear is some version of this. I'm doing it wrong, or I'm doing something wrong, or I'm missing something. I hear it all the time, at least once a day. <laughs> so when you think that, when you just go there in your brain and think, when you think I'm doing something wrong, creates an emotion in your body. And a feeling is an emotion, uh, sorry, is a vibration in your body. That's all a feeling is just a vibration or a charge. So you think a thought and then there's a charge that goes through your body and peptides move through your body and it creates a feeling. Sometimes it's a feeling that is tight or tingly or that's all feeling is, okay? So you think the thought, I'm doing something wrong. You feel defeated, frustrated, inadequate, worried, some version of that, right? It's not gonna be a fun, happy emotion. So when you're feeling that, how do you think you show up in your business? I'll tell you, you judge yourself, you compare, you don't, you hide. That's a big one. You know, you typically I see people hustle or hide. So when you hide, you're just kind of, you may go over and learn. You may go over here and drink some wine. I don't know. Maybe you're like scrolling social or some people go into overaction and they try to make something happen from a place of scarcity. And neither one works, right? Because what you're not typically doing here, you are not doing the three steps to recruit from a place of abundance. You're not meeting new people, you're not adding value and you're not inviting them in to help. That's what you have to do. This business is actually very simple. You do those three things on repeat and then you just evaluate them as you do it. So as you're meeting new people and adding value to them on social and privately and inviting them in, then you just evaluate, okay, what worked about that? What didn't work? What am I going to do differently? Not, oh my gosh, I suck as a leader. Why am I so, why is my content so terrible? It's not, even, it's not about you. It's about looking at that process and how you can continue to improve the process, right? Instead of making it mean like you're completely wrong and behind and what did you, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Because what happens is I'm doing something wrong. I feel defeated. I don't show up in my business. I overthink. I compare and judge. And then you prove the thought true. See, you are doing it wrong. I knew it. <laughs> and you have this whole crazy internal dialogue happening. But here's a really cool thing. Now that I've sufficiently probably freaked you out with this, but I want to show you why this is important. I'm going to, I'm going to explain how this work, works both ways and how this can work to your advantage. Okay, so I'm going to share with you a tale of two social sellers, of two network marketers. Okay, we got two network marketers. We have this gal here. She's number one. She's very sad. She's very unhappy. This is number one. And then number two over here, she's super happy. And she even just bought herself 
a brand new Louis Vuitton purse. <laughs> As you guys know, if you know me, I like some, I love Jesus, but I also like some Louis Vuitton. Okay, so two different social sellers. This one over here, here's what she's thinking. Nobody wants this. I don't have time. It's not working. I'm not a good leader. I don't know how to recruit. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. Have you ever thought any of those thoughts? Yeah, this social seller over here is thinking all those thoughts. I want you to contrast this with this gal over here, number two. Here's what she's thinking. Women want this. She needs this. She's been praying for this. I know I can help her. I love what I do. My work changes lives. I know I can figure this out. I was made for this. What else? Someone's ready to say yes to me today. I'm starting right now with what I know. Okay. You get the vibe from these two different social sellers, completely different energies. Who they're being is completely different. So who they're being, when, when this gal and this gal, when they go out and they work the process, connect with new people, add value and invite them in, it's going to be completely different, even though they're doing exactly the same thing. And that's because who she is being. Number two is being, is in a serving, confident, empowered mindset. She's going to, because she's thinking all that and feeling awesome and excited and empowered, She's going to take messy action. She's going to get creative. She's going to ask her upline for coaching on her answer, not asking a question that she can go find herself. Side note, she's also going to get resourceful. She's going to take 100% ownership. She's just willing to figure it out. She's not going to personalize failure. She's going to pursue big fails and be like, bring it on because it doesn't mean anything about me. That's what she's about. Now, this gal over here is having a pity party and she's feeling very defeated and she's judging herself and comparing and she's spinning. She's very confused. She's blaming the algorithm. She's blaming Beachbody. She's blaming her upline. She's blaming everyone. She may even be blaming herself. It's just not a good look, right? And we've all been there, by the way, and I'm, and sometimes we go there and talk about that. But listen, that's all being caused by her thinking. You guys, when all those things are happening in your action line, it's because of what you're choosing to focus on, right? This is why who you're being and who you're being is your thoughts and your feelings is so important. As you approach working the business, as you approach problem solving, it literally changes everything, right? So I want you, I want you to notice where you are when you're out there working your business, okay? I want to invite you to adopt number two. This is what I call being in top leader energy. This is what top leader energy looks like. This is <clears throat> showing up and directing your brain to create a belief in yourself. It's, it's um, asking yourself, what value do I have to offer her? How can I help her? Which I, I mean, with the gut protocol right now, God, you guys, you can literally change your entire business. Like there is such a need for that right now. You have so much value to offer her. What about the value with the business? Growth, financial freedom, time freedom, community. Like you have so much value to offer and there are women out there who want and need that value. And it will help them. And just think about like, I get so excited and fired up about this because we get like, oh, I don't want to be salesy. It's like, you are offering someone transformation. It's not about you. Like when I get on this call, I start to think about you, not me. What is she thinking? What's happening in her brain? What's she worried about right now? This is how you succeed. And it feels so good because it's really serving people. Right? So you just keep re redirecting your brain to that woman you want to help and get out of your head and your goals and all the things. And this is a discipline because we're human beings, right? And we're intrinsically focused on ourselves. So it's a discipline to continue to redirect your brain. But the thoughts over here that will keep you in top leader energy is I can help. 
this works. I have value to offer. She wants that value. That, write down, how did Beachbody change your life? List all the ways, emotionally, relationally, financially. Think about that when you go out to invite her. How, list all the ways you can help her. This is what I call lifetime value, the value you're offering. And by the way, this is really important. As you move from here to here, <clears throat> you're going to spend so much time redirecting your brain. Okay? It's normal for your brain to go back here. All of our brains do that. All of us. Probably at least half the time. Me too. So I'm like, oh, there you are again. This thought that just will not let it go. And I'm like, okay. Whatever the thought was. I'm trying to think of one that comes up that came up for me today. I don't have it right in front of me. Whatever the thought is, you're just like, okay, you, you allow it. So like, let's say I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I'm choosing a thought I'm doing something wrong. Is that true? What am I doing right? How is the opposite true? What's working? What's in my control? How can I show up today and serve someone? You see what I'm saying? So you start to ask your brain questions to shift you back over here. That's all you do over and over and over again with 100% commitment, right? And so when you are, when you're in the who of top leader energy, being the woman who recruits, leads themselves well, leads others well, who's a product of her product, you don't have time to be stuck over here. Here's the other one I hear, but I don't know how. How do I meet people? How do I add value? I'm like, you don't have time to ask that. When, that's only when you're over here. When you're believing I can help her, you just share something that can help her. And then you look and evaluate it. Did that work or not? And if not, you try something else, right? But our brains want to tell us we have to have the right how. It's the who before the how. First two, top leader energy, then meet new people, add value, invite them in. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so I want you to think if you right now had 15 rock star diamonds on your team, just like go there. How awesome would that be, by the way? 15 incredible leaders who just are passionate and excited. They're your ideal teammates. You're getting tons of your customers' results. Like go there. How would you carry yourself? How would you talk to yourself? How would you explain to your downline how to build their businesses? How would you market yourself? Yeah, confident, excited, 100%. Listen, you're gonna, you will get those leaders when you become that person right now. So like act as if. Like go there in your brain and then show up as her. Because really the only thing that'd be different between you and that person is what you're thinking. Like, yeah, but I have 15 rock star leaders, but yes. And now you're believing different things about yourself and you get to choose those things right now. Okay. And it is, a, that's what I love. I love the thing I love about all this. It's all in your control and anyone can do it. It's just incredible. Okay. So I'm almost done here. I've got a couple other quick things. So the process to build your business. So I talk, I'm talking about the who, right? And I know you guys want probably some strategy and I love strategy too. So I'm gonna give you a little strategy. Um, you're gonna learn by taking messy action. I share this a lot. And messy action looks like setting a timer to create content and then hitting send on the content. It's good enough. Uh, it looks like you don't feel like working out. You really just don't feel like it. Maybe you just do, you get up there and say, I'm gonna do 10 minutes and then let's see how, how it goes. Like messy action is just showing up and like not having the mindset that a lot of us have, which is all or nothing. I'm either succeeding or I'm not. And that's just not the truth. There's a whole gray. Messy action creates mo, creates momentum. Not mo, it creates mo, momentum. The big mo is what John calls it. Creates momentum. So here's how you're going to know how you're feeling. Or sorry, here's how you're going to know kind of where you're at. How you check in to see how you're feeling. Okay, so tune into the whatever you're feeling, that's going to be an indication of where your brain's at. So if you're feeling a lot of negative emotion, it's an indication you're believing something that's not serving you. 
It's like a check engine light on the car. So feeling anxious, defeated, worried, frustrated. It's like, okay, wait a second. What am I thinking right now? And Joanna said she's in my brain. Girl, it's not just you. <laughs> so you write that note, you write it down and you look at it and you, you poke holes in it. Is this true? Does it serve me? What could I think instead? Right? Asking why you're feeling a certain way and shining a light on it will help you get out of being stuck. So this is how, this is the process to build a massive business. Step one is get into top leader energy. Be the leader who's feeling the energy of someone who has 15 rock stars on your team. Think those thoughts, feel those emotions. Get out your calendar, schedule your business hours. And during that time, turn off the trainings, do not do market research, do not do graphics, do not work on any of that bullshit. Sorry, Ooh, forgot. Oh yeah, I, I, that's right, I can curse on your calls. Um, sorry guys, see I love Jesus. This is me being my authentic self. I just, this is it. Um, don't work on any of that. Work, prioritize the three steps. Go out there and meet new people. You could share a reel and draw new people to you. Go to friends of a friends, go to an influencer page, meet new people who are your people, add value to them. Think about what they're thinking about. What are they worried about? What problem do they have? What is something you can share with them that will inspire them? What transformation have you had that you can share and offer to them? Add value, then invite them in boldly. That person you're afraid to invite, what, oh my gosh. If someone would have invited me and explained what this whole network marketing thing was, without being aggressive, I probably would have done this like 20 years ago. So don't look at people and think it's not for her. You don't know that. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors, you guys. Right? So invite her in. Okay. Top leader energy, prioritize the three steps, meet new people, add value, invite them in. And then when your brain's like, but how? Here's who I want you to ask. Yourself. <laughs> ask yourself, what do I think? You have freaking genius in your brain right now. You, you, you have genius in your brain and you just have to tap in and trust that it's there. So you ask yourself, what do I think? You, you give your best answer, you trust yourself and then you test it. And the faster you test it and the faster you succeed or fail, you learn faster you move forward. I remember I used to teach this con piece of content. This is part of the, one of the workshops I did called Failing Forward. I taught it in all these different companies. It wasn't until I started my business, I'm like, oh, this is what it means to fail forward. This is uncomfortable. Woo. It's a whole different ball game. Like, cause, we, cause it feels personal, right? But it doesn't have to. And you can even like think to yourself, the quicker I fail, the quicker I succeed. Because failure isn't, opposite, isn't the opposite of success. It's part of success. It really is. Okay, last piece here. So I want you to, I shared this actually on the masterclass, which by the way, I'm not sure if you, I, I think some of you were on the masterclass. Definitely register for that. I think today's the last day to catch the replay because some of these concepts I taught, I think will, will really support what I shared with you today. But I want you to think about uh, an iceberg. I was watching um, the Titanic with my daughters like a couple months ago. And I had this thought where I'm like, man, the iceberg, you know, the little piece that you have that you can see, you don't, there's a water line and there's this massive iceberg below the water line, right? And I was thinking just about myself and how I used to obsessively check me on the metrics. I was like looking at story views and reels and like looking for validation. And that's kind of like the top of the iceberg. That's what we see, right? We see people watching our stories. We see people watching our reels or commenting. What we don't see is what lies beneath the waterline. We don't see the cousin, sister's mom who like finds out about us and then reaches out and that becomes our next elite coach. We don't see a woman like me who was stalking my coach for two months and never commented. I literally reached out to her. I'm like, what do I need to do? We don't see those things. And so when you're not believing in what's beneath the waterline, it's a missed opportunity, right? You just have to show up consistently and that consistency will compound. So I want you to think about wherever you are in your business, 
when you create your post today or later today, I want you to think about the woman out there who needs to hear what you need to share. Like you have something you've been wanting to share. She needs you to say it. I actually had uh, got coached this morning by one of my peers and she said, what does your ideal person, what does she need to hear from you today? And I'm like, oh, I love that. Because the truth is, we feel like it has to be perfect, that you're less than best, could like blow her mind, could be exactly what she needs to hear. So we need to think about that woman who maybe tonight she's laying in her bed or in the bathtub or wherever she is, and she's just like stalking you. <laughs> She's like watching all of your reels. She's looking, she's reading through all your feed. She hasn't commented on anything, but tonight you have someone who, a new fan, who you're quietly nurturing every time you share, right? She loves what you have to say. She loves what you have to stand for. And maybe one post, maybe today's post will be the post that pushes her over the edge. Right, that allow, and it's not about you trying to close her and get her. It's her saying, she's saying yes to herself. She's saying yes to the transformation that you have to offer. Right, so I want to invite you to keep showing up. All right, all right, last thing. I'm going to just drop this in the chat. Um, I do have a community, a free community, where I share lots of pieces of this. So I want to invite you to be a part of that, if that will serve you. And I'd love to also, I know we have a couple minutes, so if anyone has comments or questions, I'm happy to answer anything you guys have. Oh, I can tell you that I'm almost over here in tears again, because we've talked about this. I've learned about this. I've put this into action. A lot of you guys, like we're in the chat talking to each other. I'm like, remember, Marie, when we talked about that? Jen, remember that time I sent you that? We've worked through these things as a team and it's been this process, like, and like you said, you're going to find yourself going back to talk leader energy. You're going to find yourself like, or naturally organic, like we're human, like coming over here. And it's, I saw this meme the other day that said, uh, tell your brain, we don't have time for this and come back over, you know? And that's what I feel that I've been a ninja at since you know being introduced to this concept Rachel thanks to you and being able to not say to myself that I'm broken or that I am not made for this or like all the limiting beliefs because my brain takes me there but saying yeah. this is normal this is normal but this is how I re you know pivot come back over here and maintain it here to get where I want to get you know and and to redirect my brain and it was the missing piece for me. And you guys know I've talked a lot to you guys, a lot of you guys intimately on this and opened my heart on how it's been a struggle for me too. So if Rachel's here telling you, you know, everything she's done in her life and this is still something she has to work on. 100%. Right? Yeah, work on. No matter what boxes you're checking right now to what goal you're trying to achieve, um, we all can relate. I know because I know I relate to getting somewhere and not feeling a certain way that you thought it would feel. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because it's the journey, right? It's the journey. It's what's taking us there that we're, we need to learn to be in the mindset that's going to create not just the goal, but f fulfillment on the way to the goal. And I think that that's the biggest lesson I've learned um, and I've really honed in on. And it's been the game changer. So I hope you guys felt that today. I really did. I was getting, I know my, my team's so shy, but my text messages are blowing up. I don't know why you guys don't put it in the chat. They're like, this is, this is what I needed. How did you know? You know, I love you guys. They're so shy up on here in the, on the chat. It's so weird. How do you have a shy team of all people? No, it's crazy. But like my texts are blowing up, funny enough. Um, but guys, I'll leave it, you know, here's a couple minutes with Rachel. Ask anything, share anything, even if it's one insight you want to share. Like, this is what it's about right here. Don't be shy. Well, and I want to say one quick thing, just for all of you. Um, I think this will help. And I'm so glad to hear, oh, by the way, I just, I hope it was exactly what you needed to hear. And it's going to inspire you to do something differently in your business. So when you, when you find yourself over here and your brain's telling you all the things that you're doing wrong and it's not working, our inclination is, oh, I don't have time for this, but in judgment, like this, like you see what I'm saying? And so instead of judging yourself, and this is so common, I coach on this a lot, get curious because curiosity kills judgment. Imagine being in a boardroom. I, I had to do jury duty last week for the first time ever. And it was a whole thing, but anyway, 
So I'm the jury and then there's the judge. And it was like legit, it was kind of intimidating actually. So the judge is up there and she's like the one who's like slamming the gavel and the jury are the ones who are deliberating looking for the truth. When you're in judgment, when, once the judge slams the gavel, it's done. So you gotta be in the jury mindset, getting really curious, looking at the facts, what's true, what's not true, you see what I'm saying? So just notice that because when you go to judgment, oh my goodness, it's just like, you're just like hitting yourself in the face. <laughs> so curiosity is going to help with that. Amen. Amen. Anyone want to share anything or ask any questions? Jen, a, what's up? I have a quick question. So just coming from a background of my friends, the majority of my friends are in, like heavily involved. They're like, you know, their own little cult, whether it's, you know, burn or OTF or whatever. So it's for me, it's about really tapping into my large pool of friends that really don't, aren't interested in this. They have walls, they have barriers mm -hmm. into the small group of people that may not be involved, but really, I think I need to start moving towards strangers, you know, that don't become strangers long-term, but what's the best approach to going about that, finding them online without being invasive or like aggressive, as you were saying, like, I literally have zero idea how Monica found me or I found her. I just remember this chick is cool and I love her lipstick. I couldn't wear it, but I like it on her. And then her content just cracked me up enough to stay. Um, and obviously like there was a point in time where she was speaking directly to me. It was the beginning of the new year. We're past that new year rush. So like, how do I find strangers to be my friends mm. without being a weirdo online? Oh my gosh, that is such a brilliant question. And someone else just said that's her question too. Okay, yeah, exactly. Something for you that you probably won't expect. So the first thing before I answer that question, I'm going to back it on up to this other group of women that you have who are Orange Theory, CrossFit, whatever they are. So my hunch is, even though they're doing whatever they're doing, it's likely that you may still have some solution for them. So no matter if it's these, no matter if it's the warm market, the people who are your friends at Orange Theory, or if it's a woman who you've never met before, the way that you are able to create value for her is to think about what are her problems and how does what I have a beach body offer a solution for that? So for example, maybe she is going to the workouts at Orange Theory or we gut protocol could be really good, right? Or maybe they're to be mindset or, or maybe she wants something like, that is really quick and easy because she's busy and she wants, or she doesn't even know that she needs this. She just hates cooking and she wants to eat healthy, but it's like a whole thing. And you're like, hello, do you see what I'm saying? So it's really like getting into her thinking about number one, who is it that you want to help? Are you, a, are you a mom? No, but that's the other part of it too. There's so many people. Oh, you just, oh, you just muted. Sorry, busy moms, all of that for me. I don't have children, don't plan on it. You know, okay. so finding a way to relate, like I have a mom that lives with me. I take care of my mom and dad to an extent. So it's like role reversal. So I'm just as busy, but it's like different ways. Okay, so I love that. So that's a whole community you could tap into, caregivers. Do you have animals? Yeah, I got my dog. Okay, you're a dog mama, another huge area. Like, I just want to invite you to think about the areas, anything that you have in your life that seems like, well, this is just, there's other, there's a whole <laughs> army of women out there just like you. Now, I just got a dog. I didn't know about dog mom life until about a year ago. And now I'm obsessed. So now I know, but it's real. <laughs> it's real. Um, so it's like thinking about those things, thinking about, okay, a caregiver, someone who's caring for your parents, all the thoughts and emotions, the struggles, Trying to invest, figure out time. You're a natural person who wants to love and care for others. Do you have a tendency to put yourself on the bottom of the list? Is this a way for you to put yourself back on the list? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's thinking about maybe your target audience. This is just an idea. Maybe someone could be part of your target audience as someone who is a caregiver. And then you start to speak to her. For example, you know you want to work out. You know you want to take care of yourself but you find yourself exhausted. You know, after spending all day working, taking care of your loved one, you just feel like you have no energy, right? And she's like, yes, yes, that's me, that's me. Mm -hmm. You're like, look, I got you. I thought the same thing. And then until one day I decided to put myself back on my list. 
And by doing that, now I have more energy to be able to show up for myself, for my loved ones. So you're just speaking directly to her problem. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think about using my, my own situation. <laughs> you know why? I'll tell you. Because so often we feel like no one, like I'm not interesting. Nobody gets this. I'm kind of on my own over here. Meanwhile, all the struggles, all the challenges we're going through can be connective tissue to support and inspire other women. Right? Amen. I want to say something because I know a lot of us here, and I know you read it too, Rachel, um, the new Mel Robbins book, Hi Five. Oh, yeah. Five. It's so in line with so much that Rachel's taught me. And like when, when I read, I'm like, oh my God, Rachel's like connected. Um, but she calls it flip it, right? And I feel like this is the perfect oh, yeah. opportunity. Hearing Jen talk and I'm like, okay, now we, so Jen has identified all the reasons why not, like, like no, right? How about if you, we flip it and all the reasons yes, right? Because Jen, you were one of those oh, like burn girls and you're here, right? So identify, well, why did I? decided yeah. to transition. What did I need? What did Monica say? Or maybe not even Monica. What did I see and hear that made me understand? Or what are my life circumstances? So it's just a matter of flipping it. The same amount of energy. We could all do this. And I have to catch myself too. The same amount of energy it takes to find out why it won't work or why they don't want it or why yeah. it we come over to top leader energy and be like, asking the right questions of, well, what does she need to hear? Because what do I know for certain, right? Like, how do I know? Because I'm it, because I'm proof. I'm literally, I mean, Jen, how many pounds are you down since doing Beachbody coming back? 16, 17. Yeah. And how many years were you doing burn or how long were you doing burn? And it was like a standstill. So it's Three going years, to yeah. that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and saying like, I don't even know how Monica and I connected, but it was, it was just little things of me being myself. And Rachel touch, touched on this when she was teaching us, you know, the lesson today, it's being yourself. Like that's, it's who you're being that's going to create the how. So you're asking her the how, but it's almost like you answered it too. You know what I mean? So I think like th that was such a perfect question, Jen, because it brought it all full circle of everything we learned today. And if we could just figure out that pivot, like constantly pivot or like Mel Robbins says in the high five habits, flip it, flip it. Yeah. Like that. Well, I think what you just said too, it's like, there's two things for me personally, the change that had Monica come across me, you know, spring of last year, I wouldn't have, you know, been involved or, or excited, but my circumstance changed because I moved 35, 40 minutes away from my gym. I work remotely for the most part and timing. So I think circumstance and time are extra layers and you can't predict that. You don't know who's watching you when their circumstances change. So if you're continuing to add value and have a connection with them when their circumstances change, yes. then maybe you'll be top of mind. I mean, that's, I guess, now that we're talking it all out, this is a <laughs> hey, listen, That's why it's <laughs> awesome to have a coach. And you know what, Jen, here's the cool thing too, is like, you don't know, even if it's not time for her, what if it's time for her cousin or like, we just underestimate. We think we, it's like a one-to-one. -one. I love to think, I know we're a little over, but I, one quick thing. I love to think about this concept of the value bank. Another way to, this is also biblical, the principle of the harvest. It's like you reap what you sow. And when you just show up and you're putting value out there, it's none of your business how it comes back to you, but it will come back. I mean, I am telling you things I've invested, things I helped people with 10 years ago. And it's like, then you have this full circle. You're like, this is crazy. Cause it just, some people call it karma. You can call it whatever you want, but well, you, you reap what you sow. So you hit the nail on the head. Rachel, I love you. And, you oh, I love that. You and I hope you guys love her too. It's been such a treat to have her, right guys? Like drop it in the chat. How impactful has this been? For anyone catching the recording, I mean, I'm just so happy that we were able to spend some time with you and you get to finally meet my team. Uh, same. Thank you, ladies. If there's any way I could serve you, feel free to connect with me on Instagram or ask Monica and she can ask me and and you guys got to follow her, her Instagram stories. I mean, she drops gold every, I, how many of you guys raise your hand? Like I've sent you one of Rachel Bodie's stories. I'm like, listen to this, listen to this because she drops gold. So definitely follow her on Instagram and check it all out. All right. With that, unfortunately we must say bye. Hey, bye you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you guys tonight. <laughs>